Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you didn't know already, GoodNotes is running the Think in Ink competition. It's basically a note-taking competition with some amazing prizes. From a trip to London or Hong Kong, all the way to three runners up winning an iPad Pro with Apple Pencil Pro. If you wanna learn more about that, check out the link in the description. But for today's video, as the head judge of the Think in Ink competition, I thought I would share with you a couple of tips to help you take better visual notes. My name is Samuel Suresh. One of the things I'm really passionate about is helping students own their learning and finding ways to creatively infuse technology into that process. If you've seen my videos, you know how much I love the process of taking the information that I'm learning and making my own thing out of it through note taking. And so as we're going into today's video, whether you are submitting a note into the Thinking Ink competition, whether you're a student making notes at university, whether you're a professional who takes notes or someone just journaling, or just playing around with good notes for fun, I think these tips are gonna be pretty helpful for you. In my previous video, I ran through three principles that I use every single time I go to creating a note. There was sort of big picture. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I actually recommend you check that out first before this one, because today we're getting very technical and we're gonna talk about three very practical things that you can do in good notes to take better visual notes. The three dimensions I want to focus on are space, size, and color. And I might throw a bonus one in there too, if we have the time. As you can see today, I'm using an iPad Pro with Apple Pencil Pro, and the app of choice, as mentioned, is Good Notes 6. Tip number one, use space to visually lay out your notes. I think for a lot of people, including myself when I started, when it comes to creating a page of notes, it often revolves around writing notes from left to right, and then going from the top to the bottom of the page. And just to show you some examples from my own experience, these are some of my initial notes that I took in my first semester of university. I was just sitting in class and I was just taking notes from left to right, sort of like how I would take notes with pen and paper. And just to be really clear, there is no issue with taking notes like these at all. However, when it comes to processing that information and creating something new out of it, I often think that just simply finding more creative ways to lay out that text is a way to make your note look visual without necessarily including a drawing. But just keep that in mind, because as I'll be looking through your submissions, one of the things that's really important is that you've gone beyond what's just normally possible with pen and paper and utilize some of the capability of the iPad. So here's a really cool feature that you may not have seen before. Let's say I've written a few lines of text and I've got three dot points or definitions here and I want to find a way to organize them laterally instead of vertically. So just by using the lasso tool, if you select the text here and then click on this icon, you will be able to edit the spacing of the lines of text. And so just like that, it is almost as though this is a text box of typed out text. And this is honestly such a cool feature. I remember having to do this manually and it's taking quite a bit of time. So, and I love how in a matter of seconds now, I can just reformat these, throw a title in there, maybe add a little bit of color. And there we go, it looks a lot more visual now. And if you look through my notes, one of the things you'll see is I've always tried to organize concepts or ideas that are of equivalent value or importance laterally next to each other. And here are a few quick examples. Firstly, in this page of notes, paracrine, endocrine, and exocrine are arranged next to each other and not just as a list. Now I found that organizing it in this way in space helped me visualize it along with the differences. Once again here in this note on muscles, you can see me apply this principle in fast twitch and low twitch muscles. Here's another example here where I am making parallel points about cardiac output, resistance, and blood volume. Finally here where I am laying out the kinds of glial cells we're in the central nervous system on the left and the peripheral nervous system on the right. And so I hope that sort of gives you a glimpse into how playing around with space in your layout can make your text look visual even before you've added a drawing into it. Tip number two, play with size to highlight what's important. 
One of the magical features in GoodNotes is the ability to resize, reposition, and rotate text or images using the lasso tool. And often when I'm putting together a note, I'm asking myself, what are the key pieces of information here? What are the key names, features, concepts? And can I find a way to emphasize them so that they stand out through resizing? For example, one of the things here that I would do is select the headings and make them a little bigger. And the reason I do this is because it draws my eyes to this part of the note. And it also tells me that the information below this sits under that word. So in my mind, I'm nesting this information under that heading. And so when you read it, it's kind of self-evident, but also the process of creating it and presenting it in this manner sort of helps me retain it. Here's some really quick examples of notes where I've applied this. Here are some key words in the muscles topic in physiology. Here is a note once again showing high affinity and low affinity in oxygen. And finally, here is a note that is highlighting cardiomyocytes and pacemaker cells. In each of them, I've played around with size to highlight the important informations and headings. I think another way that I apply these principles is I always like a page of notes that I'm designing to have a title that encapsulates what the rest of the page is conveying. And so ultimately this process of playing around with size is very intentional because the largest thing, which often is the title, is the first thing that your eyes are drawn to. Then your eyes are drawn to the next biggest bit of text and then the next bit of text that's a bit smaller and then the smaller body text that comes in after that. I believe in design, this is called the visual hierarchy of text. And I think it's so helpful when putting together a note because I actually think it helps you guide your eyes as someone reading that note, but also as someone putting together, it forces you to ask yourself what's really important here. Oh, and just a note, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video as well. My pen settings actually stay the same most of the time. I'm using the fountain pen at 0 0.35 thickness, and I'm always zooming in to write and whenever I want something to be bigger, I'll just select the text using the lasso tool and then resize as opposed to selecting a different pen thickness and going from there. And so once again, just like I mentioned in my last video, use the lasso tool, play around with size and space. One final aspect that I think I've incorporated to deal with in my note that sort of brings size and space together is learning that less is more. You know, I've been through phases where I've been trying to cram as much information as possible into one page. But sometimes a bit of space actually helps. I don't know if you've ever seen those artworks or photos that are framed on walls and often they'll have a big white border around them. And I remember at one stage of my life thinking, why does that white space exist? But as someone who's gotten into photography since then, I've realized that that white space actually allows the photo to breathe. And I think the same applies for note taking, giving those important concepts and ideas, just that little bit of breathing space so that they're distinct from each other actually allows you to process that information better. So yeah, while a lot of these notes here, such as the ones on reflex arcs and neuron communication were made by cramming stuff, in contrast, you can see here that some of my acid base notes are a little bit more simple with a little less text but in my opinion, when I look at those, they help me retain the information better. That's tip number two, size. Moving on to tip number three, learn to use color to create associations. I could make an entire video on how much I love to integrate color into my notes and just the idea of color in general and how I use it in photography and how I think about it creatively. And I think for a lot of people, once again, myself included, when I started to take notes, color was just a way to make my notes look prettier and more aesthetic and just something that was more attention grabbing. But I think a much better way to think about color is as a tool that allows you to build associations between things, such as an image and a word. Here's a quick example. This is a note from the digestive system part of the curriculum. And as you'll see, I color coded the different molecules based on the visual. Proteins are red, carbohydrates are yellow, and lipids, which are another word for fat, are green because they matched those visuals that you see below. Now, not only did this help with associating the word with the visual, but as I continued to take notes, I continued to use that color palette every time I referred to those three molecules. In the next set of lecture notes, which was on metabolism, 
When I was exploring carbohydrates, I used yellow as my primary color. For proteins, I used that orangey red and lipids, I used green again. In this detailed diagram here of cellular respiration, I made amino acids, the thing that proteins are made out of, I made them red. I made monosaccharides, the things that carbohydrates are made out of, yellow, and so on. And you can even see it here on this page here where I used the same colors to show the processes that those molecules undergo. And just to throw another example in there really quickly, you can see in this note here on muscles where I am depicting muscle fibers that actin and myosin are in purple and pink respectively. Once again, in my chemistry notes, colors are seen throughout. And so I'm using intentionally to associate the visual of chemical reactions and the change that happens in molecules with the word above it. And you know, I just love the process of finding a color and a visual that matches because it forms those connections between things. Um, I remember drawing this little molecule and coloring it in yellow to signal ATP. And I remember for the entirety of first year and second year university, I use that one color of yellow for ATP all the time. And, and I really love doing this in biochemistry when I was playing around with, you know, labeling glucose molecules and allocating different colors to the differences in the different types of sugars. And perhaps that could be its own video. Let me know in the comment section below. So yeah, that is color. I absolutely love it. Along with the associations and connections that it creates, I will say I do love the ability to select a well-designed, color palette that goes with the visuals and ultimately creates a note that just stands out and works together in harmony. And so along with connections and associations, use color to make your note distinct and to make it stand out from other submissions. So that's color. Oh, and just before we wrap up, I think we have enough time for a quick bonus tip. Here is a drawing hack for those of you out there who may not necessarily see yourselves as good artists or drawers. One of the things you can do in the iPad and GoodNotes is take an existing image, drawing or diagram, and then copy paste it or screenshot it or just you know drag and drop the image over and then resize it to the size you want it to look. And now, this is a really important step, select a thick black pen and ensure that the thickness of it is thicker than the lines of the diagram. And then proceed to trace over the image. Now this process may take a couple of minutes, but I honestly find it therapeutic and enjoyable. And once you are done, take the lasso tool, select the image underneath without selecting any of your trace lines, and then delete the image. And there you go. You have an image that you can use and build a note around. Feel free to go in afterwards and add annotations, add a bit of color here and there, maybe add a title. And there we go, we have the foundation for what could be a really cool note. So I honestly see that as a really cool initial step you can take into visual note taking if you lack that little bit of confidence to start drawing for yourself. I think if you do that enough times, you actually develop the confidence to go and experiment for yourself and maybe draw your own things. But that's always something that you can work towards in the long term. So yeah guys, that is it for today's video. Three tips, or actually four tips, learning to play with space, size, and color and dabbling around with some visual drawing in your note taking. I really love the use of visuals because I think one of the things that it allows you to do is show as opposed to tell. I really do think that if you can get a word, a definition and a visual to all align together, that the triangulation of those three things there is really great for retention and makes for a really great note. And so those are some really simple things that I encourage you to try out. They're also things that I'll be looking for as I judge your notes. So all the best with your submissions. There is one week left to go before submissions close for the Thinking Ink competition. I'm so excited to see what you guys create. Looking forward to it and I will see you in the next video.